Hi, my name is Lawrence Hennessy, and I'm Philip Wallach Alicor, and together we're with Blecking Institute of Technology, located in Karlsham, Sweden, and we'll be introducing to you the port matrix system for Uptac. Hello, my name is Lawrence Hennessy, and I'm Philip Wallach Alicor, and we're both working at Blecking Institute of Technology in Karlsham, Sweden. Uh, today I'd like to present to you work that we've been working on with UNCTAD, which is the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development with a port matrix. It is a tool for the analysis, simulation, and visualization of data that has been compiled over the last 10 years. In introducing the UNCTAD port matrix, it is an intelligent decision support system in which container shipping data has been partially submitted by UNCTAD. We have incorporated some interesting features which are documented for conducting the following. Analyzing, visualizing real-time data on environmental factors such as hurricanes, earthquakes, radiation, affecting paths, etc. In addition, we are also analyzing economic factors such as evaluating the transportation routes, the gravity of trade, economic stability, viability for being used by source nodes for a destination node. The main participants of this project are the following. Lawrence Hennessy, uh, Philip Babak Alipur, Davud Zal, Mavis Anwar. The four of us have been working over the last three months on this project and we hope that the results are of interest for many members of the academic community. In a short description of the prototype, it is a visualization simulation analysis tool on historical real-time data for visual pathways, sorted ranks relative to six transportation parameters, visual routes, visual alternative paths relative to global parameters such as real-time economic, real-time environmental factors, as surveyed between ports in the form of a displayable metrics in Google Earth. We mainly introduce country pairs based on initial data set. In describing the prototype design and components, the system consists of four main databases constituting a single kernel database that provides and visualizes the intelligence. We have the first database, which is a UNCTAD annual database, UADB. We also have a timeline database, TLDB. The third database is a real-time database, which includes sub-databases, such as a real-time hurricane radiation, earthquake, GDP, currency conversion, economic databases, etc., which are linked to the uh, Internet. Finally, we have the user-based database, and together these four databases constitute the Visual Intelligence Database. So now, this diagram represents the system architecture and is self-explanatory. It begins with inputting old spreadsheet data in a partitioned manner. Also, any type of data from the Internet as we parse it in our code for real-time and historical analysis. We then finally build the VIDB database in form of executables and generate a KML file to run the result visually in Google Earth graphical environment. Now, Lawrence here will explain to you more on the components of the prototype. The prototype design and components are that we have a current capacity of 14 entries, which are paired, yielding a maximum of 28 countries. The main user interface, or GUI, supports the user on historical data, real-time data, and customized data. Automation in terms of that the main engine that runs executables after analyzing real-time data worldwide relative to historical data on our hard drive when user clicks on the relevant option button. The final output is a visual result as a KML or KMZ file in Google Earth. Let's run the prototype to see more. The following six minutes are the demonstration of the Port Matrix software. So now I'm going to play the role of a user. I'm going to start with the analysis on the data that we've already gathered from UNCTAD. And we're going to, as step two, I'm going to pick one of these years. Well, preferably real time because these years represent old data. So I'm going to 
pick real-time analysis from the real-time database. So we're going to construct that by further analyzing the events happening across the globe, like hurricanes, earthquakes, and the economy of a particular node of interest. Now, this interface here, as a sub-interface of the main program, suggests or asks us to pick one of these countries as source node to destination. Shipping goods, um, say Australia. I'm going to analyze and further visualize data on Australia. So what happened here, we had a three-phase analysis, one on historical data and then averaging all of those years from the past and submitting that to the next phase and using that as an indicator for current accurate analysis. Uh, the program is processing. Okay, now after analyzing, the program sorted these nodes out, six nodes, these are the numbers for those nodes as spreadsheet entry numbers, rows. Um, then we have the dominance factor for indirect shipment to be 40% out of the whole network of nodes, of course, shipping nodes. So now the program asks me whether I want to construct this database, real-time database in form of a KML file. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to save it and then I'm going to run the results in Google Earth. So now we have visual results on, on the things that we need to know and we have alternative paths in white as well as hurricanes and the nodes well with country flags in this case and for Australia as the shipping source to American Samoa Sink we have all sorts of information UNCTAD statistics the average points between 2004 and 2011 using it as our indicator for our current analysis as well as gravity analysis and the demographics of the country with one click could be displayed on screen and back to um, Google Earth. So by displacing the time bar here we can reveal all the information related to traditional shipment as well as the suggested way of shipping goods. Of course considering the hazards of the journey uh, such as the earthquakes. In this case we have real-time earthquakes. These are the custom icons that we've already customized data and it reveals current information with of course threat level and as we can see we have a direct hit here and if we remove the alternative path we know that this color is close to the uh, custom icons color and it reveals that this is uh, not a safe path to travel for the moment and the green dollar spot hanging above each flag represents the node's current economic status. So to validate our data, we also can uh, use this link as, say, an arbitrary database but reliable USGS, United States Geological Survey. And from that center, we can compare our results, whether our results are valid or not. And as we can see, yes, they're valid. These yellow dots represent that, okay, this path is not that safe, so that's why it's not shown in red according to our legend here. So that's why it's purple-pink. And um, this one is highly pink. And it shows that it's unreliable. So we have an intelligent system at hand for reliable suggestions being made to the user. These arrows also represent the um, plates the, that are most likely to displace and cause earthquakes and probably tsunamis if the magnitude is quite high, categorically speaking. So I can also view the raw data and the statistical data as well. 
uh, in form of countries, a list of countries, their longitude and latitude, demographics, um, of course flags of the countries, and the information from UNCTAD. Of course these are the average points as our indicator for real-time analysis. And the paths and the way that the program managed to sort values out and give us information what to do with these paths and what to do next in terms of making a decision.